everyone and welcome back to the world of Percy Jackson. Have you ever been curious about the timeline of The Lightning Thief? In today's video we are going to discuss exactly how much time occurs during The Lightning Thief. The Lightning Thief starts with Percy's field trip to the Met. This takes place sometime mid-May and after the field trip where Percy vaporizes his pre-algebra teacher he has finals and the last day of school. Now, some people might think that Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief takes place in the year 2005. However, because of some specific dates and days given within the Titan's Curse, we know that the Titan's Curse takes place in 2007. Therefore, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief has to take place in 2006. The end of the school year in New York City in 2006 was June 9th. And from my experience, most private schools tend to end around the same time the public schools do, maybe a few days earlier, a few days later. However, Rick Ryordan is from San Antonio, Texas, and the San Antonio ISD school district ended on May 30th, 2006. So let's go with the May 30th date. The next day, May 31st, is when Sally and Percy leave to go on their vacation, meet up with Grover, where Percy defeats the Minotaur, Sally is kidnapped, and Percy enters Camp Half-Blood, goes straight to the infirmary, where he is unconscious for two days. Since he is unconscious for two days, and the evening of the 31st is when he enters Camp Half-Blood, we're going to say he wakes up on June 3rd, and that is when he receives the tour from Annabeth and Chiron, where he is welcomed by Luke, goes to dinner for the first time, etc. And then the text says a few days later. Generally, a few indicates three, so we're going to go with three days. On June 6th is when Percy has his sword fighting lesson with Luke. And then the day after that is the capture the flag game where Percy is attacked by a hellhound and claimed by Poseidon, which would mean that on June 7th, Percy moves into cabin three, the Poseidon cabin, since he is no longer unclaimed and stuck in the Hermes cabin. That over the next few days is when Percy has his normal camp experience where he's kind of being ignored by everybody at camp except Luke. So then on June 10th is when Percy speaks to the Oracle and gets his quest and leaves for the quest. And that first day of that quest was very... a lot happened on that first day of that quest on June 10th. The trio of Annabeth Grover and Percy get on a bus. The bus blows up. They fight Medusa, defeat Medusa, and then go to sleep in the woods. The next morning when Percy wakes up, he is greeted by a pink poodle who gets them the money to get on an Amtrak to Denver. So the trio gets on that Amtrak with a stop in St. Louis and the travel time on an Amtrak from New Jersey to St. Louis is about 23 hours. That means on June 12th, the trio stops in St. Louis, goes to view the arch, Percy fights a chimera, destroys the St. Louis Arch, and jumps out of the St. Louis Arch into the Mississippi River. And then on that same day, June 12th, they get back on the Amtrak and head to Denver. The travel time on an Amtrak from St. Louis to Denver is about 25 hours. So they arrive early on the 14th of June. And this is actually where we get our first date indicated by a newspaper in the text. So then on the 14th, the trio meets Ares, he gets them food, they go to Waterland, they retrieve Ares' shield, Ares shoves them in the back of a transport truck with a backpack and sends them off to Las Vegas. The drive from Denver to Las Vegas is about 12 hours. So they left on the evening of the 14th from Denver, meaning they would get to Las Vegas around midday on the 15th of June which is when they enter the Lotus Hotel. Percy, Grover, and Annabeth are in the Lotus Hotel for five days, which means when they exit the Lotus Hotel, it is June 20th, the day before the summer solstice begins. A day and a half, really, because the summer solstice, the way solstices work, if you are not aware, it's like 
for the summer solstice, for example, it's the 21st going into the 22nd. So there is a frame of time that they have between the 21st and the 22nd. We know that it's late when they get out, it is dark, and they get the date from a newspaper. It is the 20th. They have 24 hours to finish the quest. They get in a taxi and drive to Santa Monica. Normally, the drive from Las Vegas to Santa Monica is about four and a half hours, but we are aware that the taxi driver is going like 80 the whole way. So let's cut that down to about three hours. So they get to Santa Monica very late on the 20th. Somewhere between 10 and 11 o'clock, they get to Santa Monica, California, where Percy talks with a messenger from his father. They go to Krusty's mattress farm, mattress barn, Krusty's water beds, and go to the underworld. So they hit the underworld just after midnight on the 21st. They're in the underworld for a few hours where Annabeth plays with Cerberus. Grover almost gets pulled into the depths of Tartarus and they figure out that Percy was given the lightning bolt by Ares and it was set to appear in the backpack when he made it to the underworld. They get back to the top side a few hours later, so early morning on the 21st, probably four or five in the morning because we do know that there are people around the beach where they come up and people witness Percy and Ares fight. Percy is also interviewed by the local news station. The crowd gets Percy, Annabeth, and Grover enough money to buy a plane ticket from California to New York. And if that is a direct flight, that is about nine hours. Let's say that flight leaves one of the first in the morning. So it's about six, let's say six. So nine hours plus the time change would be about 7 p.m. on the 21st, which is around the time the solstice begins. So Percy gets to New York, gets from the airport to the Empire State Building with a, within about an hour. So he gets to the Empire State Building at around 8 p.m., which means the summer solstice has begun but has not ended. So he is within his time frame on a technicality. <laughs> Percy then meets his father for the first time, gives Zeus back the Master Bolt, and is like, hey, I didn't steal it. It was Ares. Oh, by the way, Kronos is a problem, but we're not going to talk about that. He goes, visits Sally, gives Sally the head of Medusa that his father shipped back to his apartment, and then heads back off to camp. About a week later, so on the 28th or 29th of June, Sally sends Percy a letter explaining that um, she sold her first painting and oh, by the way, Gabe is missing and presumed dead. And then Percy goes throughout the rest of the summer until the last day of camp. The last day of camp would be near the beginning of August since the school year for New York City public schools begins August 25th, which would make Percy's confrontation with Luke be August 11th. So August 11th is when Percy has his confrontation with Luke, gets stung by the scorpion, gets rushed to the infirmary, doesn't die, good for him, Annabeth leaves with Frederick Chase and his wife, whose name I cannot remember off the top of my head at this moment, and then Percy heads on home back to Sally Jackson's new apartment. So the Book of the Lightning Thief does encompass from May all the way to August of 2006. However, the bulk of the plot of The Lightning Thief really only takes place for about 11 days in June of 2006. What do you think of this timeline? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think my math is off or my days are off? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you like this video and you want to see more videos about the world of Percy Jackson and the greater Rick Riordan universe, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon so YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a brand new video about the world of Percy Jackson and the greater Rick Riordan universe. And I will see y'all in my next video. Bye!